Hi, hello and welcome back to Gravit Designer where we've been learning how to create vector graphics using this in-browser software at designer.gravit.io. In the previous video we covered using the zoom tools, the hand tool to move the page around, the pointer tool and the subselect pointer tool, as well as the pen tool to create new vectors and also to add vectors on a path. So if you missed the first video, please do make sure you go back and watch that one first because it's got some core skills that you need to master before we can move on to today's tutorial. So just like last time, we've created a print layout on an A4 size piece of paper and that's where we're going to be doing our work on some logos in this lesson. So any logo designer knows that it's absolutely vital that when you design a logo it can be made really really small in order to go on say the back of a phone or on a badge or a laptop case. But you also need to be able to scale it up to a huge size so you can have billboards on the sides of buildings or bus adverts. And that means instead of having to recreate our logo at every possible size, we're going to be using vector graphics. These graphics can be scaled up and down to any size we want without losing any quality or crispness in their lines. Now you can do this exercise with any logo off the internet as long as it's high enough quality, but I have provided five different logos for you to use in today's lesson. So you're going to need to remember to download those from Teams. The first logo we're going to look at is the Nike swoosh. And the way we're going to bring that in is to simply drag and drop it into the Gravit interface. It couldn't be any easier. And so using vector graphics, we're going to draw our very first logo, which is the Nike swoosh. So uh, quick shortcut reminder, if we hold down the control key and we use our mouse wheel up and down, we can zoom in and out. And if we hold down the space bar, we can grab hold with the hand tool and move our paper side to side to make it much, much easier to navigate on the page. Now we're gonna need our pen tool in order to draw our logo. And normally, as I'd say, we turn our fill off, but I'm gonna leave that on for now just to show you what's going to go wrong if you forget to turn it off. But what I am gonna do is select a line or a stroke color that's different to the black of the logo to make it easier for you to see where I'm drawing. So remember when we're drawing straight lines, we just click once to set a vector point and let go. And I'm gonna draw along the front of the Nike swoosh. I'm just gonna uh, hit a point here. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll close off a shape just to show you why we're making sure we have our fill turned off. So as you can see, as I'm drawing here, the white fill has tried to fill in the shape as I'm going along. And obviously that's gonna make it really difficult for us to see what we're doing. So that's why we need to make sure that we turn that white fill off. So all you need to do to turn that fill off is to head over to where it says fill and to click on that trash can icon. That actually deletes the fill and gets rid of it. Now it's easy enough to put it back by pressing the plus button, but for now we want that fill turned off. So this seems like a good time to tell you that if you press control and hold down control and press Z, uh, you can step back and undo any mistakes that you've made as you've been going along. So control Z, which undoes the last mistake, if you keep pressing it, it will keep undoing them. And we can get right back to the beginning uh, where we're ready to start again without our fill. So while we're here, I'm just gonna uh, click on and drag up my border thickness just to make it a bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. And then I click and let go to set my first point. And then I'll move down to along the straight line and click and let go to set my second point. And you can see we've got our first vector based line. Now this curve here is gonna cause a bit of a problem. But if I click and hold instead of letting go, you'll see that as I move my mouse around, I actually have this weird bezel tool that enables me to stretch out and move the line in all sorts of cool directions. And if you're careful, and you take your time, you'll be able to exactly match that curve. And when you have, you just let go of the mouse button. Now the problem is that when you move on, you'll notice that it's trying to match that exactly to create a semicircle. And we don't actually want it to do that. So in order to reset the curve, we just click on the previous point, the one we've just made, and then we click again and hold to get our next point and we'll pull on our bezels and we'll make that nice smooth shape to complete the curve. 
Now the problem here is as we go around the corner to do the outside of our Nike swoosh, once again, the package is trying to preempt for us and help us with the curve that it thinks we're trying to draw. And once again, it's very, very wrong. So we simply click on the last point we drew to reset that to a straight line and we can continue on around the outside of our shape. And the key thing to remember as you work your way around is just take your time. So the next point here, I click and you can see that it's not quite giving me the curve along the front edge that I want, but if I click and hold, I can slowly and carefully pull out my bezel points and match that curve really, really closely. Now I'm just gonna finish this off by clicking and closing the shape so you can see my completed Nike swoosh. So now you can see I have completed my Nike swoosh and it's looking pretty good. Now obviously red is the incorrect color for the outline, but I'm gonna add in my fill that's missing by pressing the plus button here. And you'll notice that it has defaulted to black, so I've actually already filled it in black. And what I'm gonna do is grab the arrow tool, the pointer tool, and just slide the original one out from behind so you can see how this Nike swoosh is now finished, it's filled, and all I need to do is to take my border color, switch that over to black as well, and it's pretty much finished bar one thing, which is to reduce the point size of my lines back down to one point, and you'll see that that enables my points to be nice and sharp, and my lines to be nice and clear. And that is how you're gonna create your Nike swoosh. So what I'd like you to do now is to pause the video here, and have a go by dragging the logo into your project and attempting to trace around the outside. When you're done, don't forget to screen grab it and drop it in a PowerPoint so you can hand it in at the end of the lesson. And so my final demonstration for you using Gravit is gonna be using the Facebook logo. And you can see this lovely Facebook logo is actually a very simple F shape over a square of blue. And what I'd like you to do is to choose a stroke color for your lines that's nice and contrasting so you'll easily be able to see it. You're gonna set the thickness of that line so you're not gonna to have to squint at the screen to see whether you've got it in the right place or not. And then you're gonna make sure that your fill is deleted so that you're not accidentally gonna be filling in as you go. And so together, we're just gonna do this Facebook logo. So I normally start on the bottom left of the F here because it's a nice, easy starting place. And we're just gonna click and then we're gonna click and we're gonna work our way around, dragging out our bezel points and trying to be as close to the original as we can because every tiny mistake is gonna compound as we go. And don't forget that once you've done these curves, what usually happens up here I find is, just get that straight. When I draw this line, it's trying to carry that curve on for me again. So if you remember, we just undo that and we click our last point to reset to a straight line and we're back on track. So that's the reason I've shown you this one here is just because that's often a problem that we have and it's usually something I spot in the classroom but when you're at home it can be super frustrating. So here it's doing it again on this side and now I've got a nice straight edge. So the interesting thing is that when we get down to the bottom of this logo, instead of having to, oh, let's see, it's done it again. So let's just undo that, click on the last point to reset the flat line. Perfect, there we go. Now this time what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go inside and I'm gonna draw the silhouette, as it were, of this F and just be careful, take your time. Try and leave as much space as you can between your points, your vector nodes. Uh, because if you put too many in, it ends up being lots and lots of little straight lines, and that can look really, really messy. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just let's just fudge this top corner here, so that we've got something to come back and have a little play around with. Yeah, that's not perfect. Good. So <laughs> let's carry on down here. Make a couple of mistakes. Oh, let's just make that straight line again. Straight lines all the way down, and don't forget to close your shape at the end. And so there we go, I have my Facebook logo completed. And all I need to do now is add back in the fill with the plus key, select the color using the little swatch here, and I'm gonna select a slightly lighter blue so you can see the difference between the original and my version. Then I'm gonna go on to the color fill for my lines, and um, oh, that's an interesting design feature. What I'm gonna do is I'll keep them a different color so you can see them, because I'm gonna have a little adjust uh, with them now, but let's make them nice and thin. And then I take my select tool, click off it, and I'm gonna move the background image 
as we did last time with the Nike swoosh and I'm going to put them side by side so I can compare and see how I've got on and straight away I can see that there's a bit of a difference between the back side of the F on my version of the logo so what do I do start all over again well no we don't need to hold control scroll wheel up to zoom in and go back into our sub select tool and when I click on the line you can see I can actually grab hold of these nodes that I've already put in place and I can manipulate them I can grab hold of my bezels and I can make just minor adjustments to smooth out that curve and to make it much much closer to the original and you can do this on every single one of your node points but be careful sometimes when you're adjusting you can go too far and you could make it worse so don't forget Control Z is going to be your friend and so now you can see there's my Facebook logo and side by side with the actual Facebook logo so between now and the end of the lesson if you have time left it would be great to see you going into that folder from teams and grabbing hold of the adidas logo and having a go at the adidas logo it's a pretty straightforward one so you shouldn't have too many problems there let's have a go at the twitter logo now the twitter logo has got lots and lots of curves so this one's quite challenging and the final one that you can have a go at is the apple logo and the apple logo looks quite straightforward but the curve inside the apple can be a little bit tricksy what i don't want to see is lots of little lines being drawn click 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 i want to see lovely smooth vector curves so you're going to have to click hold and use that bezel and see how accurate you can be. And when you're done, please don't forget to screen grab all of the logos you've had a go at, drop them into a PowerPoint and hand them in to Teams at the end of today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed your first go at vector graphics using Gravit online. And just remember, if you're struggling with any of these concepts, you can always come back to these videos and go through the tutorials again to master these skills. And I'll see you next time.